So we're, it's a pleasure to have uh, Mike Schneider speaking today. Uh, Mike is visiting for the semester in the economics department at Stanford. And uh, he is normally at the Center of Economic Research in Zurich. He works on economic growth and public economics and economic demography and political economy. And today he has a particularly difficult task because I don't know, but I'm just guessing that uh, you're used to talking in Greek <laughs> notation. <laughs> <laughs> and I've warned Mike that we are not, uh, we don't speak Greek for the most part, <laughs> but and that you're going to have to make it understandable by demographers and sociologists and uh, a few we come. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, a pleasure to have you, and we're looking forward to hearing. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, I try to avoid Greek in my talk, so it's going to be uh, standard English, I hope. And um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, it's going to be a great opportunity at this point, actually, to present this paper uh, because we're thinking of um, revising it a bit. Uh, in the near future, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to your comments and what you think about it, uh, coming from a, a bit different perspective, Ron told me, or has said not from the Greek, but uh, <laughs> the English perspective, or American perspective. And, and I'm kind of like, uh, in most of my part, uh, a Greek guy, uh, but, but it's, it's, it's great to, to just uh, to just see what, what you say to it, and uh, I'm sure we will benefit a lot uh, from your comments in, in our uh, revision, and, and also uh, certainly your, your point at, at things uh, that will be interesting for future research. So this is a paper um, on growth and welfare uh, uh, with, um, uh, with an, yeah, where people, in, in a sense, can influence their lifetime by uh, by investment in healthcare. Uh, I wrote it with a friend of mine from the University of Bern, uh, Ralph Winkler. I um, want to start with some facts that all of you know here. Uh, so life expectancy has uh, increased considerably in the US, but elsewhere in, in the world as well. And um, <coughs> health expenditure has also uh, risen. There's no clear causal link established as, as far as I know, but many but many think that there is some uh, connection between the two, and, and this will be a, a crucial, crucial assumption that, that we also make in, in this talk. Uh, and uh, so the question would be, well, what are the welfare effects of all this? Uh, so Becker et al. Uh, in their AER paper 2005, say, okay, that's 12% uh, of the total welfare increase in, in the US between 1960 and, and 2000, would be, uh, would be due to, to this increase in, in longevity. And there are other uh, papers like Murphy, uh, Topol, and, and so on that uh, uh, try to estimate willingness to pay for, for lifetime increases. And, and that's a great literature, uh, very interesting. What they typically, or all of them basically, don't have in there is, is any uh, macro repercussion. So there's another uh, literature that, that like centers on the growth effects or macro effects of um, of these longevity <coughs> increases uh, and and the results there uh, whether or not um, longevity has increased uh, uh, economic growth uh, pretty much depends on, on the particular model that, that we use and uh, central issues there uh, with uh, retirement age how is that influenced uh, dependency ratios and, and so on. Uh, but then also, I mean, the growth effects should, should typically feed back in, into, into welfare as well, right? Uh, so there, there is, uh, we, we haven't found any uh, really uh, great connection be between these, these two different perspectives and, um, and what we wanted to do here in, in this paper is just, just uh, get a connection be between these uh, these two literatures here. And, and we approach this as a, um, essentially, 
from a say first step perspective, we want to build a simple model that, that kind of brings the, these two things together in, in one model. And, and we're taking certainly uh, a very simple growth model for that and a very simple uh, household side um, where households can uh, decide how much to spend on healthcare services to prolong their life. And, and then we're going to have these uh, growth uh, growth effect in, in there as well. So, um, and as I said, uh, we, we want to move forward keeping it simple first and we're like excluding a lot of stuff by, by assumption that you might find relevant and I'm happy to discuss all that uh, with you, how results change. Yeah. Is this related to uh, the work by Chad Jones and Robert Hall? Yeah, that's related to it, exactly. Uh, what Jack Jones um, and, and Robert Hall do is they're focusing on the uh, welfare channel in the sense that um, people get richer and then uh, the elasticity uh, of, of uh, substitution between healthcare and consumption changes in favor of healthcare. So people are spending more and more on healthcare just because they're getting richer. So. Uh, they, they don't need any um, technological improvements to explain healthcare. But on the other hand, there's a lot of literature, and I'm coming to that point actually in, in a few slides, uh, coming back to that. Uh, there's a lot of lot literature that, that emphasizes mostly the uh, technological improvements. And we were on this side actually. And there is a dispute, maybe I'm going to say it right away, uh, between on, on the one hand the Hall and Jones, and on the other hand, there's a um, paper by Asimoglu and co-authors who try to test whether health expenditures have gone up in response to increases in welfare, uh, in, in wealth, uh, by uh, instrumenting the increase in wealth uh, to oil shocks. So when they were like, uh, they, they found new oil, got richer, uh, and they didn't find any um, significant effects on healthcare spending. Uh, so, the precise question that, that we basically here address is we want to build such a model and then ask, okay, what is the, what are the uh, uh, effects on growth and welfare of improvements in the healthcare? So that is basically what drives our uh, healthcare expenditures in an equilibrium model. So it's not that, uh, that we have them exogenous as it's done sometimes. Uh, and then uh, look, okay, well, you now there's this great technology and people are all of a sudden living longer, but instead, and that's the point that all the jokes make against the uh, healthcare technology argument, well, if there's some new healthcare technology, I don't have to use it, right? If it's so expensive, well, I, I might just refrain from it. And, and here, that's why we think uh, an equilibrium perspective on that is important. Uh, Let's hope that this... The Aurora went out to go talk to you. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, and, and we're going to con consider two uh, different healthcare improvements here. One is the, the baseline mortality, so I'm, I'm just uh, uh, getting... Uh, or my hazard rate of dying is reduced because of new knowledge, say. Uh, I, I know germ theory and uh, wash my hands more often. Things like that, very cheap uh, in a sense. And then there's the, this other part that's a marginal productivity of my healthcare expenditures, right? So new surgeries, diagnostic tools, and so on, new medication. And um, what do we find? Um, so, uh, in what, what we want to call our standard model, our standard setup, don't explain exactly what, what that's going to be. We, we find a positive effect on, on growth, which, however, doesn't seem to be too, uh, too small in the simulations that we have. Uh, we're going to put some numbers to it and uh, see um, how the effect relates to it. So welfare here um, is mostly directly from prolonging life. So we have, a, we have two effects, basically. One is, if I'm living longer, um, I can spread out consumption longer and, and have a direct welfare effect of that. Can you stop for a second? I just want to know what's 
10 minutes it was more than once. And they won't stop, I think. Yeah, yeah we won't stop. We try to get them to stop. But he says he has 10 minutes to get the ones given for the rain, and then it's going to be required. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Can you hear me in the back? It grows. It's just population growth or economic growth. It's economic growth. When I speak of growth, I'm sorry. Uh, when I speak of growth, I, I want to I mean economic growth. Okay. There, there is, uh, of course, some population growth uh, if uh, people live longer. Um, but here, when it says growth, I mean economic growth. Yeah. <coughs> Can you say in one sense what's the what's the main connection between this and economic growth? Between population. So you're thinking this is how it gains in productive ages? Like, is there a story that or uh, improving death rates at 95 would generate economic growth? Or uh, the, so the story is basically how population uh, affects uh, economic growth is through the um, capital intensity in, in the economy capital per capita. So if this dilutes, so we have a capital stock and um, and the larger, so people say we have a capital stock and, and the larger the capital stock is, essentially the higher is, uh, will be the growth rate. Right? And so if we have more people, uh, then it depends on, on their uh, saving propensity, essentially what, what happens to, to growth. So, uh, uh, okay. okay, I'll come to that point in detail, actually. So, um, okay, but the welfare effects um, that, that are directly from uh, a longer life uh, without, uh, uh, or with just a small growth effect, so they depend strongly on the channel of, of the healthcare improvement. Uh, so, if we have, um, oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, if baseline mortality increases much higher than if the productivity of um, uh, in the healthcare technology increases, and we're, we're going to see, I'm, I'm going to show you some numbers, but I want to don't want to push them too far, uh, just interpret them with uh, caution because we we really have a simple model here, and uh, I think uh, things should be added to yeah. I hope you don't mind being interrupted all the time. No, no, please interrupt me. <laughs> um, I'm, and if you're going to come to this later, then, you know, then don't talk about it now. But I'm wondering about the welfare effects other through the effect on economic growth. But what you were talking about a moment ago, that mm -hmm. we live longer, we then can spread our consumption, yeah. say the same amount of consumption, over a longer life, and so we consume less each year that we're actually alive. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, presumably then, if there's diminishing marginal utility consumption, then we're going to have a higher total value, exactly. utility value of that consumption over our life. So that would be one effect, but then the other is we might just like living longer. Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. I fully agree. We don't have any don't have it in the model, uh, um, like a uh, utility from just living longer here. It's really, um, it's really a basic uh, standard also that just uh, is concerned with consumption and has uh, uh, diminishing returns uh, in, in this utility from consumption and then able to spread it out. Um, one might think, I mean, it's certainly an interesting thing um, to go in and, and modify the model in, in this direction. We would probably see higher health spending, I, I guess, and then uh, may have different repercussions on, on economic growth, which we can discuss later when, when we've seen the model. Um, but okay. that's certainly interesting. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to follow on, on one point, which is to say, not only do we maybe like living longer, but, but I really like it when my mom lives longer. Absolutely. Also a, a very good point which uh, we, we don't have in there. That's <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I fully agree. So, but, but there are also, I, I guess, these, these would be all, all things that, that would be, maybe I want to spend for my mom more, uh, more health care.
there. Uh, things that absolutely are absolutely interesting to I mean, things get complicated once I, uh, my utility depends on others' utility, but um, yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, we're going to ask, uh, okay, is this like what we see in the, in the equilibrium, the healthcare expenditures there, uh, are they uh, optimal or not? And we're going to identify two personalities with respect to healthcare expenditures. One is a well-known, uh, which, um, which basically comes from the fact that we include annuities in our model, so people can insure against accidental bequests. So if they die, uh, their wealth is, is there, so they don't like it because they're not altruistic in our model, so they can insure there. That's uh, the assumption and insure against this. Um, and uh, so then the question is how we set it up. There's a paper by Becker Philipson uh, who argue that if, if this market is competitive, then uh, uh, people don't consider their higher lifetimes reducing the, uh, the return on these annuities. So that's one well-known externality, but we have a different one, and that, that's the that's, uh, original year to this paper that comes from, from the growth effect. Since, since economic growth depends on the aggregate capital stock, and people are uh, saving more when they live longer, then with respect to their savings decision, they just consider their own um, uh, their own saving and, and household budget, but not that they have an effect on the aggregate capital stock, which is uh, an externality. So they don't consider the, the growth rate. If everyone just uh, invested more in healthcare or lived longer, then uh, and, and they would consider the, the effect uh, that this has on their incentives to save and increase the capital stock, then um, uh, they, they would take more and have a higher growth rate. Maybe I'll uh, come to that point uh, later uh, back again. So, so, so yeah. is, it, is, is the implication then that, that you want to have a, uh, I don't know, Affordable Care Act? Yeah, so pub public expenditures on health care would increase efficiency in your model. Yeah, in, in this case, yeah. I'll, I'll discuss it in detail because there is also um, uh, something that uh, we, have, uh, we have to consider here. That is the growth effect in what we call our standard model is always positive. So this would mean underinvestment in, yep. in, in a sense. But it, it might also turn negative when we relax uh, the spillover specification. Spillover means uh, that we have exactly this uh, knowledge spillover or uh, learning by, by doing or learning by investing spillover that's typical in, in this growth model. So every growth model that uh, has competitive sectors, competitive production, has some kind of spillover which drives growth, which depends uh, in the standard uh, Romer uh, models on the aggregate capital stock, that will be the case here with us. In other growth model, it's through uh, direct R&D knowledge spillovers. Uh, so, and and here we uh, make the point that it it is sensitive to to the specification of these spillovers. How the how the uh, how healthcare expenditures affect growth, and and then finally also uh, welfare. And then it may turn around that we may have, with a negative growth effect, uh, healthcare expenditures that are inefficiently high. Okay. So um, <coughs> maybe uh, just brief the literature. I, I said already there is this literature on longevity and growth. I, I just want to mention three papers that that also have in, endogenous expected lifetime in there, as we do. But they have a very different focus and setup. So we're going with a continuous time model versus a uh, two-period uh, overlapping generations framework. Uh, ours is, is more general in, in this sense. And, uh, and also, they're not uh, considering any healthcare technology improvements or so, uh, but uh, focusing on here inequality, chaotic dynamics uh, of public uh, uh, public interference into private decisions and 
Finley, um, uh, argues that uh, there is a complementarity between um, between education and, and healthcare spending. Uh, and then there's this other literature uh, which um, is concerned with the willingness to pay to, uh, to reduce mortality risk, and probably uh, a lot of people here know that. And, uh, and the recent literature, uh, Becker et al. and Jones Kleino, which is concerned with uh, basically some type of um, augmenting typical GDP welfare measure with other things like longevity, inequality, things like that. And I'm going to say something to that at, at the end as well. So um, I want to give you uh, in the next few minutes a, a brief uh, look at the model, get a feeling for, for what, what we do, uh, then discuss what the effects of improvements of the healthcare technology are, uh, show some simulations on, on growth and welfare effects that come out of our model, uh, which uh, I say again is uh, certainly a simple one. And then uh, I'm going to discuss the uh, inefficiencies and uh, show the sensitivity with respect to, to the alternatives below the specification. Finally, I'm going to conclude. So, so basically, the model just uh, comprise a household sector, just people living there, consuming, and uh, production sectors too, where consumption good and, and healthcare needs to be produced. And healthcare here really only prolongs life. So uh, it might be interesting to put healthcare in, in the utility, for example, uh, also, but that would be future research. And, uh, and we have two in insurances here. The one is um, against the accidental bequest, so there are annuities just to abstract from uh, capital market uh, incompleteness. Then we have a healthcare um, insurance here. That is uh, the way through which households basically uh, buy healthcare. Uh, so what we assume is that a household can choose uh, the uh, yeah the household can choose uh, to forego a certain uh, percentage or share of, of the wage in, into a healthcare uh, insurance and, and then get a uh, higher longevity for it. That's basically the yeah. assumption. So we have a, a large number of households and they face a, a constant hazard rate um, of dying throughout their lifetime. And this hazard rate, and, and this is the, the normal point here, is, uh, is now a uh, function of, of the healthcare that they buy. So they can forego con consumption and, and for that uh, live longer in expectation. And, uh, and then in, at each point in time we have a new cohort and, a, and we don't consider fertility <laughs> choice here. We really want to concentrate on, uh, on mortality. So this is mortality of the household? Is it also been like the new cohort? Is it a new cohort of households? Yeah, basically a household is, is basically just a single individual. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's a, so there is uh, a certain number of individuals born at every point in time, and then a certain share of the, uh, the people alive are dying, and uh, yeah, and it's just a single person basically, what we call household. So it's not dynasties. Okay. okay. There's a reason that you don't just call them persons instead of households. Yeah, because um, probably used to the Greek language. Typically, I mean, an, uh, an agent, an economic agent, uh, maximizes utility. Then we call it a household problem. Or, it, okay. and so it's just the better language. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah, and, and then they, they, the individual or person, just maximizes uh, expected discounted lifetime utility. So um, we we just have a stream of consumption. Uh, and uh, and then they, they just maximize it with respect to their um, savings and, and healthcare expenditures. Um, so and here comes the remark. So this is the that is uh, one of two formulas, I guess. Uh, so uh, one, two, three. So, uh, so the um, so this is the uh, the utility function and. 
And here, if we added a constant here, then we would get the Hall and Jones specification. Then we would get uh, this Ralph effect. This one here is, is the typical one in, in the growth literature. And, uh, and the one with the constant is, is the one that uh, Hall and Jones and, and some people in the, um, in the willingness to pay literature uh, for health care take. And this, all that does is it excludes these wealth effects. So we, um, people are not spending more on healthcare just because they get richer in, in this model. And it would be interesting to, to just extend it in the, in the next step to, uh, to that as well. What's the difference between T and S? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is just consumption at time <coughs> T for a household or an individual born at time S. And that's his, uh, his utility, instantaneous utility, and then you just you just have the integral right over the lifetime. And here V is a concave function, and that's why spreading out consumption more over the lifetime is a good thing. And here I also uh, have the this is the Azimoglu paper that I uh, told you about, and here Hall and Jones, the the counterpart of it. So. Uh, yeah, households, they, they just work one, one unit of, of uh, labor at each uh, time during their lifetime. They can save and, and borrow assets at, at the going rate, and, and they're born uh, without assets, so there are no bequests. They don't get anything from their uh, parents, if you like. And the, uh, and the person takes the return on annuities as given, so they see a price for the annuities. Uh, that they get during their lifetimes, and, and they forego potential bequests to, to this insurance firm. So, mm -hmm. so uh, there's time one unit of labor in each period? Or in each period per person, yeah. And so they're not saving for retirement here? Exactly. That is a, a point that I, uh, that is important here. We don't have a retirement decision in here. So we don't have, we just wanted to keep the, the simple mechanics of the model, and then uh, maybe uh, go to a retirement decision later. Um, I'd like to discuss that a, a bit later maybe when we see the, the effects of the model, then we can discuss what it would change. Um, but I think we can, we can work out qualitatively the, the mechanics uh, as a first step without. So, so in this, um, as I wanted to point out, uh, taking this price as given um, neglects the effect that households have in total, in, in the aggregate, on the, the return because the return is going to be lower because people are living longer, right? Um, uh, so not taking this into account is the one of the externalities that's uh, well known in, in the literature. So here's the, here's the consumption production, it just takes capital, labor, and a productivity level or technology if you like, and that depends on uh, capital intensity here. So, and that is the, the, the spillover. This is the, this is the spillover that depends on how much capital per capita is in the economy. And, and this is what, what's going to drive growth. If we hadn't anything like that, we wouldn't have a growth model. Um, one, one has growth models with just capital and labor, but if we want to have competitive firms, uh, then we uh, every growth model needs a spillover effect, and that's a crucial thing. Um, okay, and then just we get um, demand via profit maximization, and, and the healthcare sector is also relatively simple. It just works by uh, taking out labor from uh, from the consumption sector, if you like. So. Um, if I buy a unit of healthcare, I essentially buy a doctor, for example. So we, so healthcare is just uh, produced via labor. I think it, it should be possible to uh, to augment it with, with capital, but for now uh, we, we have it with labor. And then, of course, we need uh, in in the equilibrium in the labor market equal wage between working in the consumption goods sector or becoming a doctor doing health care. And then that's the second Greek here. 
uh, thing. Uh, the, that is our particular healthcare technology that, that we assume here. Uh, so we, we just want to have a, as a, as a first thing, a, a linear technology here. This is the baseline mortality that I have, the probability of, of dying without any healthcare expenditures. This is my healthcare expenditures, how many doctors I do employ, basically. Uh, and this is a productivity factor, uh, how productive this healthcare uh, is in uh, reducing my mortality rate. Can you reduce it to zero? Uh, no, <laughs> that's precluded by assumption, but uh, if, if we wouldn't have a, um, a bound here, yes, then yes. I didn't put the, the constraint on here to okay. avoid the greed, but uh, yeah. yeah. You, could, you could reduce it to zero, you could sell this for big money. <laughs> 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 That's true. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And so does this uh, labor efficiency, does that change over time, or is it just constant? The sign, yeah, that's going to be our comparative status. What happens if we change it? The labor, uh, the, the productivity here in the healthcare sector, exactly. And, and what happens, so suppose a new technology comes, I can do better heart surgery. That would be something that uh, changes the, the sign upwards. And um, so, okay, as I said, the household decides on healthcare spending. How much of my wage do I want to forego for healthcare? How much do I want to consume and how much do I want to save subject to a budget constraint? And, uh, and then here comes the necessary condition. That's an interesting uh, point. So in, in the optimum, the marginal reduction in, in, the, in lifetime consumption, so if I forgo uh, some consumption during my lifetime, then the utility that I forgo for that at the margin must be the, um, must be the value that I get uh, by having another period of life in expectation. And that's it, uh, what we call, or is called in this literature, the quality versus quantity of life uh, trade-off. There's another one with respect to education, the Beckerian, right? Uh, so here, um, I want to forego some quality of life to, to live longer. And uh, the intuition is, as, as one uh, already pointed out, that I can alleviate my diminishing returns from consumption at at each point in time. By, by so you're assuming that more life is always like less quality, lower quality life? Here it is, uh, because I have to invest a bit longer. I mean, in the sense, okay, don't want to don't want to push these uh, these names too far here. Um, it's just it just means that I have a lower consumption level if I if I live longer because I have to invest to to live longer in expectation. That's all. I mean. Which may be healthier and more successful in the process. So I agree. I, I fully agree, and I think that's really something interesting for future research. Okay. <laughs> As I said, it's a it's a simple model. I'm coming from from the Greek part. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to imagine this sort of the individual op making optimizing decisions over the lifetime, including expected length of life and. It seems to me that if there are annuities, as, as there are here, mm -hmm. that is going to lead to overspending on health care. Yeah, exactly. Is that right? Oh, that's okay. exactly right. That's uh, what I tried to point it out uh, before. Let's see Becker Phillipson paper. That is, um, if we have annuities, then we have overspending because they don't uh, consider the repercussion on the return of in annuities in the market if they live longer. Well, what I was thinking is that if, or if you didn't have annuities and you were, at, at some point you would think, uh, gee, if I live longer, I'm going to have to reduce consumption each year, and uh, well, maybe in the, the specification that never is a problem, but um, with the annuity, it sort of takes, you can consume, you don't have to reduce consumption each year just because you're spending more on health care because the annuity is going to pay you as long as you live. Yeah, exactly. That's, um, um, I mean, if I would, if the uh, individuals would take into account that their annuity, um, okay, let's put it that way. I think um, 
if, if I understand you correctly, is I'm, I'm spending more on healthcare uh, because there are annuities. I don't have to worry that that my my wealth goes goes away. Is that uh, the well, sort of, yeah. Or, Compared or to a world without one. Exactly. So you're comparing. Exactly. You're comparing. You're not in the world with annuities. Arguing, uh, asking, is that optimal with annuities? The, uh, how much do they buy and so on? So, but uh, <coughs> the question would be: Okay, uh, contrast with uh, with a world without annuities. Do they spend more with annuities relative to a world yeah, without? Yeah, exactly. And I would say so. Yes. Yeah. Um, Depends both on risk aversion and on um, discount rate. Yeah. yeah. If you're a risk taking, um, you don't mind not having an annuity possibility. And you consume a lot now because the future, especially if you have a high discount rate, doesn't yeah. matter. And you're willing to take the risk. But if you're risk averse, like many people are, uh, uh, if you don't do the annuity, ooh, you, you spend on health care now. Other ways, I don't know. You're really worried about them too long. That's right, but under uh, risk version, I, I'd say they, they spend less. And uh, maybe I can point to, to work by Antoine Bonnier here. Uh, I think it also depends on the risk version with respect to the length of life, which is additionally another yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. as he pointed out. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's a good point. Um, so, okay, what happens in the production sector now if, if people spend on healthcare? So, if if they spend on healthcare, that means they're buying doctors, so we have less labor in, in the consumption production. That is uh, a bad thing for the interest rate because capital is not as productive. We have, we have less uh, people working with it. On the other hand, people um, save more because they live longer. So saving is more valuable. That decreases the interest rate. So, so how does how does saving work in this model? If I'm not if I'm not going to retire, why do I save? Um, you save because um, you have a uh, uh, okay. You you save <coughs> saving determines your consumption path essentially. Uh, can't can, can I just consume my earnings every? Period? Yeah, you can exactly. You can, but then what what you would have say without. Um, of any growth, you could decide. Okay, I just consume what I what I have my wage every yep. period, right? Yep. But then you can, you can you <laughs> can say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, but then you can say, okay, well, wait, maybe I, I just save something here, right? Okay. Uh, and and then my consumption path over time. At the beginning, I start with lower consumption, right? Yep. But then. My consumption goes like that, it's a bit steep now, but something like this, and then in total, I have a higher uh, higher level of consumption, say I'm dying here. Well, this integral would be higher than this, and then which path I'm, I'm gonna take is, that depends on, on the uh, uh, time preference rate and, and the risk aversion. So you must be building something in about the time preference, where by the time preference, is bigger than or smaller than the interest rate? Is that uh, exactly? Rate? That's in, in every. Um, so if the uh, if we want to go Greek for a second, uh, would be this is the time preference rate, this is the interest rate, and this is the um, um, the uh, risk aversion uh, into. Right. Yeah. The, the other way to do this would be to, to just go back to the original Tobin setup or the Diamond setup, where where people retire. Or have look you have decreasing productivity over the lifetime, so that I mean, but I even think that's the, the only way to generate model, realistic uh, time pass. Or, mm -hmm. You know, Ron's work. Yeah, but I think even in in the uh, two period uh, diamond OLT, uh, and and they work in both periods, uh, you you uh, can have people save <coughs> because. Uh, you, you just trade off, okay, how important is consumption for me today versus tomorrow, and what do I get for it? I get an interest rate if I save, right? So maybe I just say, well, just for go with consumption today, I get an interest rate. Tomorrow I get more than, than this one unit of consumption that I for, forgo, and that's the underlying thing. And saving would be much higher, of course, 
if, if they had a retirement. I agree. So that would make a quantitative uh, uh, impact here. And the, um, so um, exactly, and then we have the, the capital intensity, which increases by the, uh, by the higher capital stock, which means uh, that my uh, uh, other factors of production get, get more uh, productive, and, and this makes uh, the interest rate increase. And what we call our basic model is the one where these three effects on the interest rate cancel out. So here the interest rate is, is constant in, in the basic model and in the generalized version, which I'm going to show you later, we're going to have a parameter here on the, on the spillover effect where we vary, vary, vary the, the spillover effect and see what, what comes out then. One more quick question about consumers. Are they, what's the form of their expectations? The perfect expectations? Yeah, rational perfect expectations. And, and are you doing, you're not worried about transitions? That's a that's a point um, here at, at, in in this uh, uh, setup. It, it's all set up that, that they basically know how the economy goes, right? And um, from a technical point, it'll be that each person here, when uh, when R is is constant, will will have a certain share that they forgo for healthcare consumption. So we 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 basically jump at a steady state, but if the if the technology changes, we're going out of that because the population grows, right? And people are living longer. Um, so um, I'd, I'd like to discuss this maybe at the end when, when we see more. Then we can exactly point down where it makes a difference and, and where it doesn't. I think I have to hurry on. Right? Yeah, well, we have about eight minutes. Oh, okay. So, um, so just, um, I think um, this one is, is important to understand the, the basic mechanics here. Of the model. So, what does healthcare do to growth? Then, it's basically the trade-off between taking labor out of so uh, growth in consumption, uh, good production. Taking labor out of consumption, good production is a negative part of, of healthcare because I have these doctors that don't do anything to uh, production of the material good. On the other hand, uh, we're having higher capital, which increases the growth rate. And this is a trade-off that we're juggling around with. Uh, in essentially. So the growth rate here uh, increases if mortality declines and, um, and also the, the fertil fertility uh, declines because fertility uh, dilutes uh, capital. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm gonna go um, a bit quicker. Uh, so um, what, what we have here is that uh, that's just a, a central result that if uh, the healthcare technology improves either uh, by decreasing the baseline mortality or increasing the productivity of healthcare expenditures, in both cases in our basic setup, healthcare expenditures increase and uh, so people are um, living longer in expectation and the growth rate <coughs> increases here. And the healthcare spending that's triggered um, by the healthcare productivity increase is greater for uh, for a for the same period of lifetime expected lifetime increase than if I would achieve this expected lifetime increase with uh, uh, with a baseline mortality um, uh, baseline mortality decline. So that means essentially that welfare. And that's what we're going to see. Welfare becomes um, welfare from from these technology uh, improvements uh, become uh, is higher than in, in the case of baseline mortality declines relative to an increase in the productivity of health spending. And this works through a direct effect, right? So suppose I've I've employed some doctors, and and they all get more productive, then I have direct effect because the doctors that I have already are. Uh, um, are more productive and, and living longer because of that, and an indirect effect because they're more productive. Maybe I want to hire another one. Okay, and then I, I want to come to to get a to get kind of like a feel for um, what we're talking about uh, here. If we if we put in some numbers uh, in, into that model, that that seem reasonable. 
So what I want to do here is I um, want to make a welfare comparison uh, and I want to consider two, two islands basically. So we have an individual, individuals in island one, they have healthcare technology one. That leads to uh, in equilibrium healthcare spending H1 and uh, a mortality rate uh, P1 and, and a growth rate D1. And, and in island two, it's basically the same thing. It's just that uh, we have a different healthcare technology that then leads endogenously to different uh, healthcare spending and uh, expected lifetimes. And they're going to ask, okay, how much more consumption at each uh, instant of time that these persons are alive here, would I, how much more consumption would I have to give this individual on, on island one uh, to make uh, this guy as well off as, as the guy on island two. That's basically uh, uh, corresponds to, to uh, Becker's uh, hypothetical uh, life cycle individual uh, in, in essence. And, and then, um, so out of our analysis, we, we have uh, a direct welfare effect from, from a longer life, but also the indirect effect because people are, are living longer and saving more, so that's the, the growth effect of longevity. And we, we want to split this uh, welfare, um, the total welfare effect, into these two contributions. So that's what, what we uh, can do with, with our model. And, and an illustration here, uh, so if we increase the, um, the medical treatment uh, productivity factor uh, and, and we increase it such that with endogenous uh, healthcare spending uh, of the people uh, expected lifetime, that is the large T here, increases by five years. So for example, um, here if we increase this uh, factor psi from 1.19% to 1.25, then healthcare expenditures go up uh, from 27% uh, or 28% of the wage to 33. Uh, this guy's living, uh, so here would be the individual on island one living 75 years. This would be the individual on island two, 80 years uh, expected lifetime with a better uh, healthcare technology. And then the question would be, okay, how much more uh, uh, consumption would we would we have to give this guy on the 75 years island to uh, to be as well off as, as the one with the better healthcare technology and the difference here is only the uh, productivity uh, factor of healthcare spending and then we see that the total increase would be here in, in this uh, basic example just 2.15 uh, percent and and the growth effect would be just a, a, a very little fraction of this. So it's just 0.11%, uh, so very little here in, in this baseline setup. And the direct welfare effect would be, would be around, um, would be most of it. So this spreading out consumption to uh, get rid of diminishing returns. If we make the same exercise for the baseline mortality with the same parameter values, uh, and, and we uh, have the, the productivity such that they don't want to spend anything uh, on healthcare in equilibrium just to have the, the biggest possible uh, contrast to, to the previous numbers and also to refer to uh, models that have longevity uh, in exogenous. So here no one spends in equilibrium that would correspond to the exogenous uh, longevity increases. Then we see we got uh, here, a 10% increase in, in overall lifetime, so uh, around uh, five times as much welfare difference between the guy on island one and island two with a longer lifetime. And growth effect, again, very small. Most of it is direct welfare effect. So here, the, uh, the increase in, in these different productivity uh, parameters really makes a difference. And now can ask, Okay, so what, what can we say then for the numbers that we have like in, in the real world in, in the US? So we have a, uh, say the, the guy on, the, on island one would be the one under the conditions of 1960. That's like uh, he, he gets 
an expectation 69 years old um, uh, versus the, the other one on island two, that that would be the one under conditions of 2000, 77 in expectation of uh, age that he dies. And then we have the average growth rate and, and we, we calibrate our model such that, so we plug in the real uh, healthcare spending numbers augmented by so we, we cut them in half because we thought not all healthcare expenditures would prolong life, but just uh, be healthier. So, um, and then we, we calibrated our model such that the, the growth rates that, that uh, would uh, come out uh, on average would be the real growth rate that we observed during this time. So here again, as I said, the growth effect is relatively small. And, and we would have, if, if we plug in these numbers, a 5%, 5.6% increase in, in welfare, uh, the largest part, again, from the direct welfare versus the, um, versus the growth effect. And I think since I'm running out of time, I'm going to skip the comparison to, uh, to South Asia here. Just uh, say something to, I think I've, I've said something to the, uh, to this externality, so the externality here would be uh, with respect to the growth rate. Uh, so the growth rate basically determines the part of the wages that a household faces, and uh, this depends on, on the uh, aggregate capital stock, which cannot be influenced by a single household because he's so, he's so small. If he could, then he would invest more in healthcare because he takes into account that the growth rate affects his, his uh, wealth. Uh, so here we would have underinvestment in healthcare, and this is the well-known effect that gives overinvestment in healthcare. So, um, uh, which one's the dominant force? And uh, it depends on on the time horizon that, that we that we take. Uh, so, in in the short run, uh, it it's, uh, it turns out that well, let's let's put it a, another way. There is, with respect to the, to the growth externality, there is um, an effect on, on later generations. It's not just that I could improve my, my own um, welfare if, if we all considered that, but if the growth rate were higher, then generations that are not born today, but, but uh, late in the future, they're starting with a higher wage relative to if we had this, this smaller growth rate. And this additional effect uh, makes it such that the welfare losses, if, if I don't consider the growth rate into uh, the, um, if, if the growth rate is, is lower because, because of this uh, externality, this welfare loss increases over time the more generations I, I consider. Uh, and, and this is why the, um, the growth effect dominates here. And we, we can say, okay, uh, Investment is, is not for this reason uh, too high, but it uh, but it may be too low. We we have too little investment in healthcare because the effect on, on the growth rate is not is not considered by the individual households. Okay, I think we're going to need to mm -hmm. finish. Just uh, just maybe one sentence. Okay, one one minute. So if we generalize the model, just. Uh, we generalize the spillover effect, we vary the spillover effect by this parameter eta, uh, and eta equal one is the old model. So uh, basically we're just uh, playing a bit with the, with the trade off here, we're lowering this force and uh, this one stays constant. Then we see that um, if, if we lower uh, eta and use the same numbers for, the, uh, for North America with respect to healthcare spending, then the growth effect is here much higher between these, these two guys on the 1960 island and the 2000 island. And uh, so the, uh, since we're taking, uh, the spillover effect is not as, as, long, uh, as large anymore, so the, the taking out of uh, productive labor becomes, uh, becomes tougher on, on the growth rate. Uh, that's why the growth rate de declines uh, stronger and then we, we may have uh, negative growth effects and, and substantial ones, whereas here this is a direct effect from the, from the longevity increase and uh, it might even outweigh the, um, 
uh, in, in total might even outweigh the direct effect. So um, uh, that's uh, where we want to point out that uh, the setup here is important and then we, we might have a change in the sonality result as I pointed out earlier. And uh, maybe just two implications of, of this whole exercise. Uh, so one is, of course, uh, if the welfare effects depend on, on the uh, type of the technology improvements, then the question is, okay, what are the prospects for increased longevity in, in the developed world, where we mostly rely on big medicine relative to simple uh, kind of behavioral changes like washing hands and maybe uh, smoking is this one point now. But, um, but also with respect to new and generalized welfare measures, where uh, people want to include longevity into a, a bigger picture, so GDP plus longevity, uh, that's perfectly fine, but, but we, we want to point at the interaction between the two. So if I want to give policy advice and say, okay, well, great, longevity has increased so much, uh, well, GDP is uh, lacking a bit, uh, so why don't we just increase um, GDP? Might be, or the interpretation is, it, it's not so clear whether uh, this uh, welfare that we see in, in these data on, on longevity has not uh, have either a greater effect through the, through the growth effect or even a, a smaller effect because of these repercussions. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, let's uh, take a moment and see if there are further questions. Yeah. Uh, to create this simple model, you um, have many heroic assumptions. Yeah. Uh, the art of model building suggests that only if you can test your model can you distinguish a good model from a bad model. Exactly. I don't see how this is testable, uh, given all your heroic assumptions. Don't you have to relax some of them? Uh, um, yeah, I agree. Um, in, in a sense, that, that, that's a good question. I mean, there are like, these empirical papers where Atsumoku, for example, wanted to get a uh, handle on, on the effect of uh, longevity and on growth, right? Um, uh, things like that. So here, basically, the, the question would be here, for example, that's what I pointed out here, which specification applies, right? I want to know. I mean, that, that really makes a difference. and. Uh, I mean, our model would say, okay, you, you should test whether the uh, healthcare expenditures have a have an effect on on the interest rate or not. If if it doesn't, then we're in the basic specification. If it does, then then we're here, right? So there are kind of like um, testable predictions. You would have to control for retirement age, yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> That's true. I I agree. Um, but yeah, I guess my working question should be, which direction will you take the model now uh, yeah. on, on all those other things that have exactly. to be Exactly. So that's like the future research slide that I didn't show you <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there, there are many, many things. I mean, you, you pointed out this one here, retirement choices of households and also fertility choices are important. So that would be interesting to, to put in. Also, uh, age-specific survival rates that are exogenously given uh, would be very interesting to consider trend, transitional dynamics that uh, was pointed out here. And what we actually thought of um, is extending the framework to, um, to endogenize the, the healthcare technology. I mean, that in our model is an exogenous uh, variation, right? And of course, it would be great to like get some empirical um, evidence on on this, but um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a difficult task. I, I fully agree, but nevertheless, I mean, uh, I think the from a from a more applied perspective, um, I'm not sure if, if this model. Um, I mean, yeah, the, maybe this one testable prediction, but. Um, I think it, it might just be, that's what we thought, uh, be a core model that, that might be extended as a, a simulation model, right? Just uh, put it in stuff. I mean, for example, um, David Weil has done things like that. 
not in a not in a growth model, but he was like considering the effects of health on um, uh, on I think uh, GDP, and and he was like taking all these micro estimates and uh, things and put it in, and I think that would be maybe a future direction of, of this model as well, uh, considering the. Um, the different repercussions on the growth rate, because I don't think you, or yeah, it's hard to single these these different channels out in in, in, uh, in a regression, right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So um, those of us going out to lunch, let's uh, meet up here. Or you get the end. Yeah, you know you do. But it's in the discussion, so in, in this sense. Yeah.